Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I like to take science and apply to all things plants, both indoors and outside. And during my garden tour for the city, one of the things that I did show was this bed behind me, which is a self-watering raised bed. I know, crazy, right? It's not sponsored. I did get this kit from Lee Valley Tools. I'm sure you can buy it online as well. It's called Water Ups. And essentially it is a pond liner on the bottom with some perlite inside of the, um, basically the midway point between the pond and the substrate above it. I'm gonna go through what I like about it, what I don't like about it, just so you guys can determine whether or not this is something you're interested in. And the reason that this video was requested was because a lot of people were saying for mobility issues, for vacationers, people who have like cottages or lake houses or don't typically live in the city um, and are at the lake retirees mostly um, in the summertime would benefit from this because it has the water basin at the bottom and obviously you wouldn't have to leave your water on when you're away i mean big benefits there my neighbor had my grandma had her water um a pipe outside bust on her this spring flooded and destroyed her basement and then my neighbor actually had a water leak that i think it cost him like three thousand dollars on a water bill Anyways, I digress. If you leave for the weekend or any period of time you leave your house for where you're not going to be back the same day, shut your water off. That's the moral of the story there. But with this guy, you won't have to. But before we get started, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below what winter crops you are planting this year and when your first frost date is. So essentially, um, the setup for it is very easy. You can adjust the size of the bed smaller. You can't adjust the size in the sense that you would do it longer or more narrow because the pond liner is a very thick firm pond liner so you couldn't cut and adjust it whatsoever um, obviously you could use like an alternative tarp to that if you wanted to but anyways it's just it's pretty set up the way it needs to be so with that being said the top portion that's between um, the plastic and the, the top of the bed is just compost you're not supposed to use any form of soil soil it has to be either compost or potting soil they recommend using like a peat or coconut coir. it has to be fibrous the reason for that is because you need some oxygen to work its way into the system and the only way for that to happen is through a more fibrous medium like a compost or a coconut coir, etc and so forth you can mix some perlite in although i'm not finding any root rot issues or signs of chlorosis which is a sign of potential overwatering not getting any of that happening here now i will say i fill this once every maybe two weeks now given this year has been a cooler season than normal but it's very very simple um, to deal with and it's one of my lowest maintenance gardens hands down and the performance is the same as any sort of raised bed or in ground bed um, for that matter one thing i will say though is i am starting to notice some salt buildup on the surface and this could be because of the compost that i'm using obviously is contains higher levels of salt otherwise it wouldn't be accumulating on the surface i did use uh, quite a bit of coconut coir in here as well and i mean i'm not going to go into great detail there because i have done and reviewed and talked about coconut coir endlessly on this channel but it does have some salt content in it and so that can surface to the the top area now obviously in this setup i can't flush the salt out this is enclosed there's no way to get to that pond liner after everything's set up so if you are using a medium that suddenly is salty you're going to have to watch your plants to make sure they're not suffering from salinity issues or showing any signs of potential pH issues and if it is you may have to amend that accordingly by either removing what's in there or figuring out a way to temporarily flush the system and setting it all back up again like I said right now I'm seeing it but it's not harming the yield or the plants whatsoever at this point now one of the biggest drawbacks of this kit is trellising and it's pretty minor by all means I'm just completing because I don't I didn't have the time to set it up properly but you can see I've got like a really sick lean on some of my posts and this is because there is not much to stick any form of stake or trellis into this there is literally just the tiniest little bit of compost and then the water ups kit on the bottom because of that these stakes have literally nowhere to go 
And once the plants start getting basically of any notable size, it's just a tipping match. They're just falling over. Um, now the solution to this would be to trellis outside of the kit or the bed and actually put a trellis system on the outside on the lawn and then do something very similar to what I did in my backyard with my tomatoes um, here and this setup and that's what I'm going to do next year if I choose to put tomatoes in this kit. I don't think root vegetables would do particularly well in this to be quite honest but I do think things like peppers and stuff would um, and the other benefit to this and I'm actually very excited to try this out is going to be wintering this so because there's a pond in the bottom I can technically put in warm water because it's going through the tube and it's not going to touch the plant roots so I can put in pretty hot water into the system and warm the soil which would ultimately warm the cover over top of the soil which in this case this year will be my cold frame I have like a little two by three cold frame that I can put on here so when it comes to leafy greens and growing in the winter this is going to be a major factor in season extension without any energy being used because I can use water to warm this um, is it going to be a little bit labor intensive yeah sure but if you enjoy gardening um, and you just want to try new stuff then obviously this is going to be a win-win there um, the water obviously has a higher heat heat holding capacity as well so it's going to stay warmer for longer and there's various different benefits um, in regards to that and I can give you guys an update on how that goes or I will give you guys an update on fall and winter cropping um, but I do think that that bad boy is going to be a huge factor so there you guys have it water ups uh, self-watering beds I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below if you are into bougie beds raised beds different ways of doing raised beds i think it's cool it's cool i wouldn't do like a whole garden of them but that's because i'm physically able to do a lot of stuff but if i had a cabin or a location where i wasn't able to get to but i wanted to have vegetables or flowers or whatever the case is you could guarantee to have i'd have a few of these set up there so anyways i'll talk to you guys later bye